We are Vince Young days away from Texas Longhorn football. What's up, guys? BK, Brad Kellner. Today is Wednesday, August 25th, 20 and 21. Hope everyone's having a great week so far. And that's right, one week from Saturday, Texas football begins. The Longhorns opening up the 2021 season against the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana 10 days from now, and we're continuing our countdown of the biggest problems facing the Longhorns as we inch closer to the 2021 regular season. I'll put a link into the description with Monday's video and with Tuesday's video. So on Monday, we talked about the safety position. Yesterday, talked about a couple of the position coaches that I have some questions about. And today, we're going to talk about the tight end position, guys. Not just the personnel, but how Steve Sarkeesian, Kyle Flood, and this offensive staff is going to use the tight ends on this roster. Please like this video if you haven't done so already. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet. And I want to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Last Stand Hats. You see the promo code scrolling across the bottom of your screen. Use BK10 at checkout and you'll get 10% off your purchase of any Last Stand hat, the best damn UT hats in all of the land. All right, guys, so let's talk about the tight end position. I think I have less confidence in these tight ends than anybody else who supports Texas football. I just don't have a lot of faith in the guys that are on campus right now. I know there's some experience there. Cade Brewer's entering his fifth season. I know there should be some talent there. You've got Jatavion Sanders coming to campus as a five-star. He was your best recruit in the class of 2021. We've seen some flashes of greatness, of goodness, from Jared Wiley during his Texas career. You've got some pieces there. You've got some bodies. I'll give Tom Herman a little bit of credit. Yes, even though Tom Herman did a lot of things wrong at Texas, he did do some things right during his four years in Austin. And he did try to bring in some talented pieces at tight end, but we just haven't seen enough consistency in terms of performance from anybody that is on campus right now. And I went and pulled up the numbers, guys, the 2020 numbers. I know it was a little bit of a shortened season. You had seven new assistant coaches on Tom Herman's staff. Uh, You know, maybe not the best representation of how good these guys could have been, but the four tight ends who played last year, Cade Brewer, Jared Wiley, Malcolm Epps, who is no longer with the program, and Braden Leibrock, uh, those guys combined for only 29 catches, guys. So the tight end position, not much of an impact spot for Texas last year. I'm curious to see if that changes this season. And I think there are a lot of reasons why you should believe the tight end is going to be a big part of Steve Sarkeesian's offense this year. Now, last year at Alabama, the last couple of years at Alabama, Sark didn't utilize the tight ends that much, but God, he had four first round receivers on those two teams. You don't want to take any of those guys off the field at Texas. I don't know if there are any first round receivers on this team. And we've talked about it on this channel when I was doing radio in Austin. We were talking about it there, too. Not a lot of proven commodities at wide receiver for this Texas football team. So that might open up some more playing time for the tight ends at Texas. Steve Sarkeesian has talked about it from day one. He wants this thing to be a meritocracy. He wants to put his best 11 guys on the field at all times. And just because there's not a lot of proven commodities at wide receiver, that might mean having one or maybe even two tight ends on the field often this year. And let's be honest, guys, Bijan Robinson is the best player on this football team. Bijan Robinson is going to be the focal point of this offense. So having a tight end or two on the field to provide extra blocking for Bijan, maybe not the worst idea in the world. Uh, I think most Texas fans have PTSD from the lack of touches Bijan got in 2020. We don't want to see that happen again. So yeah, if Bijan gets overfed this year, I think everybody's cool with it. And if that means giving that dude some extra blocking so we can break off some more big plays, then I think you have to be pretty cool with that as well. So I think that right there, those couple of things right there, the lack of proven commodities you have at wide receiver and the fact that the running game is going to be the identity of this team, uh, that tells you that we might see more tight ends in this offense in 2021 than we did in 2020. The question now is how good are those tight ends going to be? Like, I don't feel great about any of the tight ends being tremendous impact players. And guys, when, when is the last time Texas has had an impact tight end? Do you have to go all the way back to Jermichael Finley to find like a difference maker at tight end? I know Andrew Beck was really, really effective as a blocker 
and he was on the 2018 team, which was Texas's best team in the last decade. And him being a part of that was a huge reason why Texas was so successful, especially in short yardage situations and in red zone situations. I mean, having that guy as a lead blocker, either lined up as a tight end or an H back was instrumental to this offense's success or that offense's success in 2018. But Andrew Beck wasn't much of a pass catching threat at all. Elite blocker didn't give you much in terms of the passing game. So I think you have to go all the way back to Jermichael Finley and then David Thomas before him, where you're talking about a complete tight end, a guy who defenses had to worry about when they went up against Texas on Saturdays in the fall. Can any of the guys on campus be that guy? Maybe. I mean, Jatavion Sanders has the most potential for sure. Once again, a five-star guy, a guy who played both ways in a high school, a guy who wanted to play offense in college. I mean, that dude, over the course of his Texas career, I think is going to be a difference maker. But how quickly will that happen? Will we see that in year one? Uh, JT, not a guy who was in early for spring, so perhaps a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of learning Steve Sarkeesian's offense and getting accustomed to, to speed to the speed of the college game. Cade Brewer, he's been here for four years, dealt with injuries a lot during his Texas tenure. He's solid, but once again, I, he's not a game changer. He's not a difference maker. He's an okay blocker and he's an okay receiver. I don't think he's a guy who's elite in either one of those categories. I don't think he's a guy that instills fear in defensive coordinators. Like you don't have to game plan to stop Cade Brewer. He's just not that type of weapon. Now he did lose some weight this year. Uh, this offseason, so maybe that makes him a little bit more fleet of foot. Maybe that makes him a little bit more of a threat in the passing game. But, you know, we've seen Cade Brewer for four years, guys. I don't expect him to be a 40, 50 catch difference making type of guy this year in the passing game. And he's never been an elite blocker either. I'm not quite sure that's going to change this season. But Cade Brewer, I think he's going to get some playing time. How much does he give you? That's a question. Jared Wiley, at times over the last couple of years, has looked like he can be a force in the passing game, but you know, as, as good as we feel like Jared Wiley has been, he had nine catches last year. He also dealt with some injuries too, but expecting that guy to be a huge part of this offense. I'm not quite sure that's fair. And I don't think Jared Wiley brings a whole lot to the table in terms of blocking too. So you don't want to give away what you're doing with your personnel. What I mean by that is like if Jared Wiley doesn't improve as a blocker, he wasn't good at blocking in the spring game, too. He got beat a couple of times in the spring game. But also going back to the last couple of years, if he doesn't take a step as a blocker, then I'm not quite sure how much you can bank on him creating holes for this running game. And you can't just have Jared Wiley on the field when you're throwing the football, right? You can't give away your play call to the defense with your personnel. So Jared Wiley right now, probably your best pass catching threat at tight end, especially for the guys who are coming back. But if he doesn't get better as a blocker, then – He's not a super complete tight end. And I don't know how much Sark is going to trust him if he can't be a big part of this running game, which once again, I think is going to be the identity of this offense. JT Sanders, once again, feels like the sky's the limit. How quickly will it all click for him? And you've got Juan Davis. Guys, I've heard more about Juan Davis, both in the spring and in fall camp, than I have any other tight end on campus. The true freshman, three-star recruit, he was brought in as an athlete. And I think we all saw him in the spring game he juked, damn near juked Chris Adamora out of his shoes on one of those plays. And by all accounts, he's getting better and better. Now, he's a true freshman. I, my, my anticipation is that he is going to redshirt. And, you know, in today's college football, redshirting means you can play in up to four games. So maybe we see Juan Davis at times. But, my goodness, if I keep reading more practice reports about that guy making plays, then I don't know. Maybe Juan Davis is a part of this offense for more than four games. Uh, in 2021. And then Gunnar Helm, I think for sure, is a redshirt candidate, another three-star tight end coming in from Colorado. So I don't know how much you expect from those two guys this year, but that's a question for me, guys, the tight end position. Once again, the first part of this two-part question, how often does Steve Sarkeesian utilize the tight end spot? How often do we see 11 personnel or 12 personnel on the field this year? And then which of the tight end steps up? That's a position for the taking for me. Uh, if Jatavion Sanders comes in and proves his worth early, then I, I think there's a reason to believe that he can be the number one tight end by the midway point in this season. Cade Brewer, is it finally going to really all come together for him? Can he stay healthy? Same thing with Jared Wiley. Does he become more of a complete tight end this year? Let me know. I want to hear from y'all. Feel free to comment below. Where's your confidence level at with this tight end room as we sit 10 days away from Texas and Louisiana? Once again, if I sound negative, 
because I kind of am. Like I, I feel like I have less confidence in these tight ends than anybody else, right? I mean, people, most people I've talked to, whether it's guys that I've worked with or just fans that I've talked to, they feel like the tight end position can be a strength for this football team this year. And once again, Tom Herman brought in a lot of bodies, and we're all talking about three and four and five star kids in JT Sanders' case, but I just haven't seen it at Texas to feel super great about that position and being a strength in 2021. So let me know. We'd love to hear from y'all. What do the tight ends look like this season? What would be a successful year for the tight ends? I think if you can just get one and a half, I would love to, but one and a half complete tight ends, like guys you could trust to be solid blockers and guys who can do something in the passing game that would be great. If Jared Wiley emerges into a stud and those flashes of really good play we've seen turn into consistent, really good flashes of play, that was worded poorly. You guys know what I mean. If we can just see more consistency out of Jared Wiley, that would be great. Uh, if Jatavion Sanders is as good as advertised and that happens this season, that would obviously help this offense out tremendously because I'm not quite sure where this team sits in terms of impact wide receivers. So there's going to be opportunities. And we've seen that in the first two fall scrimmages. We saw that in the spring game. A lot of 11 personnel, a lot of 12 personnel, which is a little bit of a change of pace from what we've seen around here over the last couple of years. All right, I feel like I've been word vomiting for the last couple of minutes, so I'm going to stop this video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate the love. Please like this video. If you haven't done that yet, please subscribe to this channel. And uh, once again, comment below with your thoughts on this topic or any of your thoughts on Texas football. I'll try to respond to those comments as soon as I can. All right, guys. Once again, Last Stand Hats, the video sponsor. Use code BK10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase from laststandhats.com. We'll be back tomorrow with number nine. Yeah, number nine on our countdown of the biggest problems facing the Longhorns going into the 2021 season. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, y'all stay safe. Y'all stay healthy.